Draco Official, a person who is now widely considered the best Arsenal player in the game and is favored in skill over people like Tanker or Cactus, purely because of his cracked aim in the game. From the Arsenal Competitive League to the biggest Roblox tournament, Draco is most definitely a legend. Today, we will be going over the history of Draco and all his accomplishments, as well as his massive legacy on the Arsenal community. This is the legend of Draco official. Alright, alright. Uh, Draco Arsenal. Okay. Like, how good can he be, right? Nice, nice cheats, buddy. Draco was originally a Rainbow Six Siege and CSGO player before he started Arsenal. He ended up stumbling upon a game known as Roblox, which is obviously a really popular game. Since he already had good aim and decent FPS skill, he ended up playing an FPS game on Roblox. This is when he found Arsenal, which is extremely popular at the time, averaging around 100k players daily, and even won Game of the Year in Bloxy Awards, which is an award show managed by Roblox. Draco started actively playing the game in early 2020, and his first Arsenal video would be posted on a second channel on YouTube of him getting a world record on the beach map on standard mode. The next few months would be him grinding the game for levels, and ended up making two brand new Arsenal montages. His first Arsenal montage was called Raised by My Sword, which has 140,000 views till this day. His aim in this montage is better than the majority of people today, which is honestly crazy considering the time range. He was getting hard accused in his montages because of how good he actually was, and he ended up getting hackizated in the comment section in his montage called Castlers Jr. And he even got banned from Arsenal, and got unbanned a few days later as it was proven to be false. Draco would get so good at the game as he aim trained and basically grinded the game super hard. He decided to play against better players in an upcoming Discord server known as ACL, also known as Arsenal Competitive League, which was a scrimmage server. If you guys want to know more about ACL, I made a video covering ACL's history if you guys want to check that out. It is linked in the description of this video. But anyways, Draco would end up playing in this Discord scrimmage and get one of the highest ranks in the entire server known as R12 which was the highest rank in the entire server at the time. As time passed, Draco started to gain attention from the competitive scene of Arsenal. He would constantly beat high ranks, and he was considered the best ACL player at the time. This led to him getting a lot of respect from the ACL community, and his competitive experience would make him even better at the game. As his skill improved, he ended up getting requests to make some Arsenal montages, he ended up making three Arsenal montages with his most viewed one at 800k views at the moment. Comments stated that Draco's aim is how they imagined their aim in dreams, basically showing how good Draco's aim actually was. Some YouTubers recognized his aim in these montages, and one of them known as KillerLod1 ended up making a top 10 Arsenal player list and put him number 6 which is actually really inaccurate as most of you guys know, but many people at the time didn't really know about Draco or any of the best Arsenal players, so he ended up getting a little attention from this list. Tanker, Cactus, and even Fusion Boys were still considered better than Draco's skill in the game because of how popular they were in YouTube and outside the competitive scene. However, there was no way for people to know who was better unless they faced each other, which is something that Draco could not do because there was minimal contact between him and the best Arsenal players. However, one day everything changed. Tanker ended up joining ACL and would join Draco's VIP when an FFA match was being hosted. However, Draco's arm was injured, he stated that he had a carpal tunnel during this FFA. Tanker would end up destroying the entire lobby and then taking a clip which is now at over 100k views on YouTube. The chance was completely lost, but there was still one YouTuber left. This YouTuber would contact Draco personally and ask him to 1v1 in Sandtown after seeing Draco's skills. This was an Arsenal Shorts YouTuber named Cactus, who was considered the best Arsenal player in the game at the time. They first 1v1'd on Dizzy, but this was not Draco's main map, 
and he ended up losing 30-31 in a very close game. But in their rematch, they would do Sandtown, which is a map that they were both good at. This 1v1 was streamed on Draco's Twitch, but it's sadly no longer public. However, one of Draco's friends actually recorded a large portion of their 1v1 and unlisted it in their channel. The link to this 1v1 video will be in the description, but anyways, let's continue on with the video. This 1v1 would go down as the sweatiest 1v1 in Arsenal history between two legends. The 1v1 had begun, and things took a turn in Draco's favor in the start. Being more familiar with the map and holding very good angles, Draco would top frag Cactus in the start. This lead would grow even bigger when Cactus would end up getting stuck on the AUG at 12 points. This let Draco try even more to make sure that Cactus would not get off the AUG, which is the worst spray gun in competitive mode. It was a 12-12 situation and whoever got off the AUG would end up in a massive advantage. This is when Draco got the high ground and stood on a small roof below the plane and ended up getting off the AUG first, which is something really big. Since Draco's aim was obviously better than Cactus's, him having good guns would be massive. It was 20-16 until Cactus started abusing the meshes in Sandtown, which wasted over 10 plus minutes of the 1v1. If you don't know, basically Arsenal had a huge mesh bug in Sandtown at the time, and it would be extremely annoying. After this, Draco would continue to play passive, and since Cactus always had spray guns, it would be really hard to out-aim Draco. This is when Draco got the golden gun by over 5 points, and everyone watching the 1v1 would think that it was over for Cactus, but they were dead wrong. Draco ended up choking super hard with the golden gun, and Cactus would somehow get all his 5 kills back, and it would be 31 to 31. Draco would stress a lot at this moment, as many should, and the final kill would end up coming down to a small reaction time. Before the two legends came face to face, Draco's friends would say that Cactus was going to win in the chat as Cactus fell down. As he fell down, he ended up shooting with the golden gun, but Draco's reaction time would end up killing Cactus, and he would win. Cactus got a dead upon. This would go down as the sweatiest 1v1 in the history of Arsenal competitive and Arsenal history itself. After this massive victory, the results of the 1v1 would be spread among the competitive scene. However, the competitive scene was barely any percentage of the entire Arsenal community as it does today, and Draco was still not even close to being quote-unquote famous in the community. However, this would all change as Draco got a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity from a content creator known as Jimbo Slice to participate in his creator tournament. This would be very scary because this was Draco's first creator tournament where he could go against one of the most famous Arsenal players in the entire game. Players like Bandites, Wake, Fusion Boys, and even 2Perfect would play in this season. This tournament would be watched by most of the community. Before the tournament started, people would root for Bandites or Fusion Boys, but everyone said that Fusion Boys would win the entire tournament since they didn't know anyone better. Draco would end up still getting a lot of votes as the winner in predictions because of how famous he was in the competitive scene. Before this tournament, Draco would constantly train his aim and fight some of the best comp players. Once his training was done, he'd stream on Twitch and play in the tournament. He first went against Red and Luke, who got demolished by Draco, which was expected. However, in the second round, something happened that nobody would ever forget. Draco would play against a former ACT winner. If you don't know what the ACT is, it's basically bigger than the JCT, and it's the most popular Arsenal tournament that's sponsored by the game developers. This ACT winner was no other than Too Perfect. This game would be very interesting. The first four guns would contain an AUG and a Springfield, which gave Draco a massive advantage since Too Perfect would get stuck on them. He completely destroyed the two and ended up getting a massive lead of over 20 plus points because they were stuck on the AUG. And this game was genuinely just super unfair for 2Perfect and he would end up getting really angry. This is so dumb. I, I can't do anything. 
After this, Too Perfect would end up getting really angry and his emotions would get the best of him. He ended up abusing the roof, which is against the rules, but it didn't matter anyways because they were still too far behind. Too Perfect would also end up killing Jimbo when he spawned in to warn Too Perfect, but Draco still ended up winning 32-13, which is the funny part. Too Perfect would then accuse Draco in their VC and then leave. That carry was huge. That's... that's a carry. Go to boss. Uh, nice, nice cheats, buddy. Okay, man. I'm streaming, but alright, man. Oh, GG, JK. GG's. The situation would end up with massive drama after the tournament, and Too Perfect would make some controversial statements in Twitter and Discord. However, after this, Too Perfect would make a video addressing this and apologizing to Draco and his fan base. Draco and Too Perfect are actually friends today, so it ended up with a happy ending. However, I don't blame Too Perfect, as Draco is an alien. After this match, Draco would go on to fight the Fusion Brothers in their main 2v2 map, which was Sandtown. This was very stressful as the Fusion Brothers were extremely aggressive, which is gonna make it hard since Draco's teammate FK2T is very passive, and he'd basically have to 1v2 them. This is when the Fusion Brothers would start winning in the start of the match, because the first gun would be the AUG, and with their aggressive playstyle and familiarity with the map, they would start beating Draco. Draco's aim was too good though, so he'd ultimately make a comeback and win the game, and now he was in the finals against Zizites and Vex, however they weren't as good as any of the players they fought so far, so Draco would end up winning the entire JCT in ease. This gained him so much recognition and his view count would rise by so much. Some people would start considering Draco as the best Arsenal player after this. After the tournament, lots of people would start a really cringe trend. Lots of younger Arsenal players would copy Draco's avatar, Arsenal loadout, and even his name. Names would keep ending with an official or a 7 in its name, because that was Draco's Twitch name. My channel was fanboyed off Draco itself as well. Arsenal would be taken over by these Draco fanboys, and it would be a new trend in the Arsenal community, with so many Draco avatars that it was actually so crazy. Meanwhile, Draco would continue to practice in the competitive scene, now more famous than ever. He'd end up getting the Aimstar's Jumbo Tall Frenzy world record, as many other world records too. But next might be one of Draco's best achievements yet. This would be winning the biggest Arsenal Creator Tournament in Arsenal history. This is the Arsenal Creator Tournament, which was hosted by Bandites and Wake. Not only would the winners share 100k Robux, but there was also a trophy given to the winners, as their melee. Draco entered this competition and destroyed the first two rounds, but the third round, he'd face one of the most cracked aimers in the entire game. This was a YouTuber known as Joey the Player. Joey has similar aim to Draco, however what he doesn't have is game sense, which was a huge problem in the 2v2. Joey's teammate was Alpha1 and they were both extremely passive players. This let them beat some Arsenal gods such as Skeleton Pro as they destroyed him in previous games. Alpha1 and Joey stuck together most of the time, which let Draco in a 1v2 situation most of the time and he ended up getting plenty of double kills. Joey and Alpha were also stuck in beach or rocks most of the time, and Draco and FK2T had control over the map. As Draco went insane, he'd completely decimate their team, and eventually end up doing an insane double kill and win the game. This basically meant that he won the tournament because the finalists were Jimbo and Fusion Jack, who were not even close to Draco's skill, and Draco had already, already beaten them off cam. Draco would end up winning the tournament and also even breaking Castler's ACT record in the 2v2 match with the time being. Our protagonist After the tournament, Draco would make a community post stating that his life was not very good. He would quit the competitive scene and just play Arsenal pubs from then. He'd still play with some of his friends, such as Queen or Hoodsy, but he also made a washed montage. But two months later, something would happen in late 2021 that would absolutely shock everyone. A random player known as Ad Strafing would play in the competitive scene. 
This person was considered quote unquote better than Draco, and he would be the first person to get the new R13 role. Some assumed that it was a cheater or that it was some crack player on alt. It was pretty suspicious, but most people were just surprised to see how good this person's aim was. They would get 1,000 subscribers on YouTube and over 100k views on their montages. But a month later, Draco would make a video on his channel in 2020 called Ad Strafing Era. Now this video is taken down, but it's basically Draco admitting that this was his alt. Now people were shocked because most people said that Draco was washed and not good anymore, but they all got proven wrong. Something else came exciting in 2022 for Draco. A new game known as Aimblocks would start to gain attraction. Bandites would host a $20,000 tournament on this, which is crazy if you realize how much money that is. Draco would only have one major competition. This was Who is Aqua, who was basically an aimlapse master. Draco would have very tough competition, but once the tourney ended, Draco would win and was no doubt the best Roblox aimer to ever exist. Things got a bit quiet after this, and this is when things actually took a bad turn. Draco would get banned on Roblox for unknown reasons. Everything he'd worked for, his items, his avatar, and even his ACT trophy, all gone. This is when he moved to Valorant and started to play other games more. However, after a while, he'd returned to Arsenal, washed again, with a new account called PMI that was given to him by his friends. Surprisingly, Draco was still fairly good at the game. He'd make a 1v1 stream and then destroy high ranks such as Roman, Vault, and Angry Aimer. The developers of Arsenal also decided to give him the ACT trophy back on this account, but also something even more special. Orange team, basically the new purple team, that's given to trusted content creators. This team was given to Draco and made his experience in Arsenal much more fun, and he was back on the grind. He'd make two new montages called Orange in the Desert and Ethereal Aim, which both currently have over 100k views, which is absolutely insane. He'd also go on to do many more amazing things, as well as getting the RB Battles world record for the shooting range in Arsenal, which is extremely hard. Lots of months passed and Draco's aim got even better. However, as the years went by, Draco started to lose care of the game, and he recently switched to a new account that's now called Shop by Draco, and sometimes streams it on Twitch. With his aim even better than ever, Draco definitely has the best aim out of anyone in Arsenal. But what will he achieve next with his improving aim? Will it go beyond Roblox or something even bigger? Well, that, my friends, is the legend of Draco Official. Goodbye.